Hello everyone, Kevin Grameon here, application specialist at Holzer in Mooresville. Uh, come on Christian, let's talk about vertical panel saws today. Hey everybody, so yeah, we're going to be talking about vertical panel saws. Uh, so Kevin, uh, vertical panel saws basically just like a table saw, right? Yeah, it's like a sliding table saw. However, it's vertical, so it saves floor space. This is uh, the number one thing everyone needs in their shop. Yeah. Saving space. Absolutely. So it, it operates the same way, mm -hmm. with the same uh, features and results, just on a vertical platform to save floor space. Yeah, so uh, with a vertical panel saw, I mean, is it like uh, a one size fits all? Do you just have this vertical panel saw like a shop would have a table saw, or are there different grades? No, you can be any size to operate a vertical panel saw. Um, and we also have different models uh, there. So we have a 1254, 1255, and a 1260. Each one, as you progress through the models, has different features. Okay, all right, so uh, Kevin, today, uh, why don't you take us through it? Show us how it works, man. Yeah, sure, no problem. Safety first. So today, we're just gonna cut a panel. So the first thing I need to do is uh, load my panel onto the machine. Uh, we have rollers on the bottom to lift and assist with uh, rolling the part on. Then I'm going to do a trim cut on the vertical edge and then a trim cut on the horizontal. So let's get it going. Now, horizontal trim cut, we'll be doing the trim cut the same all the time. Typically, we have a four by eight sheet, uh, which is actually 49, so everything is one inch bigger. So our first cut is normally about 48 and a half inches. Instead of having to find it either on the digital scale or a manual scale each time, we have a quick stop. Just a very simple mechanical quick stop. Right here, these cams. I can come down to it, lock it in place and every time do the same trim cut. So no thinking involved, very quick setup. Now we'll make the cut. Social distancing stick so you can make sure you're six feet away. Now the next rip we want to do is uh, let's say for drawer boxes or something to this effect. Let's say eight inches. So if you have a, a 1254 or 1255, you have a repeatable stop on the side. Christian can get a look at this stop here. So I can set the scale, my measurement, let's say eight inches. I'll bring it up and swing it out, bring it down to the top of the panel and lock the machine. Now the machine's set for eight inches from the top of the panel. So I can get the eight inch rip. Now we'll cut. Next rip we'll do is uh, let's say 12 inches, maybe for uh, upper cabinets, maybe a shelf inside. This time I'm going to utilize the 1260s features of the digital and uh, use it there. So I personally work in millimeters, so I need a 305 millimeter cut, which is about 12 inches. So I have a, an incremental button. 
from the top of this sheet, I'm going to come down 305 millimeters. So, as Christian can see, I'm close enough, but not there. I can actually move the motor up and down and fine tune the measurement. It's actually moving the motor for it. So I can get right to my measurement I need, say 303 for instance, and then we can go ahead and make a cut. I'm also going to utilize some of the automatic features. So the machine will move by itself. I can turn it into automatic with the key switch. And I have different options on either full cycle, half cycle, and or I like to have it pause. This way I have time to get the part off the machine before it returns. Yes. Uh, how are you getting such a clean cuts? Yes, yeah, so uh, ahead of the blade, there's a scoring device. It's uh, two knives that go and they scratch or break through the melamine coating just on either side of where the cut line will be. Therefore, when the blade comes around, nice, clean, crisp cut, no chips. Uh, does the saw blade have a fine when you cut? No, there's actually uh, behind the blade, there's a riving knife. The thin blade, the same as the curve, and this prevents the board from collapsing onto the, the, the blade from the back side of the blade or even in vertical from the board compressing. Uh, th therefore, we don't bind. So, at this moment, uh, the panel has been cleaned and trimmed on the top, on the vertical, on the horizontal, but the bottom still needs to be trimmed out. So, I'm going to flip it over for my final cut. Also, the panel is going to become lightweight and it may want to move. So I'm going to put our attachment on the side and this will keep the panel from moving as well in case it has some tendency to slide.
now we can either work on the bottom rail and I can make my vertical trim cuts and cut parts to size. I can either work on the bottom rail or I'm a little taller, so I like to work on the mid shelf, make it a little bit easier. set my stock for the size of my part. So, as Christian can see, say if I want an 800 millimeter part, come down close, stop number one. Now I can use the fine tune adjuster, get me right on the measurement I need, and lock it in place. Bring the part over. And make the cut. My scale only goes to 1,086 millimeters. So if I want a larger part than this, let's say I want a 1,200 millimeter part. We'll unlock the saw. We'll go to the next cut station. On the scale, I'll press the button for the next station, which is station three, and now it automatically added the distance. So now 1,200 millimeters to the blade. It's back here. So now we have a 1200 millimeter cut. Yes, definitely. That would just repeat my introduce my rip cuts and continue cutting vertically. So what's the max thickness of a panel cut on this? Uh, it's up to three sheets of uh, three quarter inch material. It's so about 58 millimeters. All right. Um, you know, how many years has been making panels up? Oh, longer than I've been around, uh, for sure. So uh, it's been a long, long time. Yes. When the saw is moving by itself, is there a safety stop? Um, there is. Uh, there's these stops on either end of the machine, uh, the press. So at any moment we can stop the machine. We can stop the movement manually. We just press the manual button here or the e-stop. Uh, yes, yeah, so it will stop from the ends of the machine. Uh, typically a customer will have a safety zone marked on the floor. So no other persons can come in and out of my safety zone, and I am the one responsible to decide. Can you walk through the control panel? Um, yes. So here's my speed adjuster. This is for when I'm doing the automatic moving, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Uh, this will determine how fast I cut with the, the speed of the, the traversing. So if I'm cutting a thicker material, we need to go a little slower to give it more time or harder material, or vice versa, a faster material. 
you do have an option on the saw to have the blade variable speed. Okay, you can have a two speed, variable speed, or a single speed. If you have a variable speed, it will have an inverter drive, and that's what this blank knob is for here. I control the blade itself. Let's say you're doing plastics or composites, or uh, some of the metals, or even chalkboard, whiteboard materials. We need variable speed for that. Uh, you have a key safety switch, so only the operator can put it into automatic. Uh, these are the cycle switches. Uh, this is what made it pause at the end of the cut. If I have it over in this area, after it makes a cut, it's going to return. Let's say my trim strip is not so um, not so critical. I can get this off very quickly and meet the saw back at the other end. The other part that's taken off, I might need some time and not be rushed to get the part off onto my table and not damage them. So I would use the, the pause. In horizontal, if you're cutting a small part, the other switch means it only uses half the frame, not the full cycle. So save some time. Start and stop for the automatic, return, start and stop for the blade, and to lock it in place, vertical or horizontal. Ah, that's a very good question. If I'm doing taller material, the saw has to start way up here, okay? Now I can reach the handle, uh, Christian, he can't. <laughs> so he, he pulls down the handle so he can operate the saw and bring it down to make the cut. As you're finishing the cut, it's gonna hit the floor and bind up. The wheel is so it rolls up. As I complete the cut, it'll roll up and it won't bind on the floor and stop me from making a cut with the rubber handle. Great crest. Is there any more questions I could answer today? If not, or if you're watching the video later and you think of another question, put it in the comment box. We will monitor the videos. Uh, we're gonna answer the questions. Christian really is getting bored, he has nothing else to do. <laughs> so uh, he would be more than happy to relay the questions to the technicians or anyone else in the sales department, and we can definitely give you any information you need. So if, that, if that's it for today, then great to see you guys. Uh, enjoy the day, enjoy the weather. If you have good weather in your area, get out and about, do some exercise. Um, we hope to see everyone in person very soon. Very soon.